Hi, MCAT 2017 CRAM, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, Flashcard Set 17.3, What is Life? As you view the reading of this passage, you'll notice um, one or two highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner specific meaning from these selections, but don't neglect to read the entire passage because you still need to um, in order you know, to answer the choice. <laughs> not answer the choices. Well, yeah, what, you know what I mean. But garner meaning to aid you in selecting the correct answer choice, okay? So two reasoning within the text questions follow the passage reading, and they're really not that bad. So good luck and happy reading. Paragraph one. The greatest problem of biology is understanding the divide that exists between life and matter. There seems to be an unbridgeable gulf between them, but how could life have emerged from matter if it is fundamentally different from it? The received view today is that life is but an extremely complex form of chemistry, which is equivalent to saying there is no fundamental divide between them. Primordial, uh, this word meaning existing at or from the beginning of time, genes and primordial proteins appeared spontaneously on the primitive earth and gradually evolved into increasingly more complex structures all the way up to the first cells. The basic units of life, the problem of which molecules came first has been the object of countless debates, but in a way it is a secondary issue. What really matters is that spontaneous genes and spontaneous proteins have the potential to evolve into the first cells. This, however, is precisely what molecular biology does not support. Paragraph 2. The genes and proteins of the first cells had to have biologically, biological specificity, and specific molecules cannot be formed spontaneously. They can only be manufactured by molecular machines, and their production requires entities like sequences and codes that simply do not exist in spontaneous processes. That is what really divides matter from life. All components of matter arise by spontaneous processes that do not require sequences and codes, whereas all components of life arise by manufacturing processes that do require these entities. It is the signaling of these sequences and codes, or semiosis. Semiosis means the process of signification that makes the difference between life and matter. It is semiosis that does not exist in the inanimate world, and that is why biology is not a complex form of chemistry. Paragraph 3. The problem of the origin of life becomes in this way a pro the problem of understanding how the first molecular machines came into existence and started producing new types of molecules. We have seen that chemical evolution could spontaneously produce bond makers, molecules that had the ability to stick subunits together, and we have also seen that some bond makers could become copy makers by sticking subunits together in the order provided by a template. The next step was the appearance of code makers, and that is a much more difficult, and that is much more difficult to account for. But in principle, it has the same logic and we can regard it as a natural event. Ribosomes, for example, can still arise by a self-assembly from their components. What really matters 
is that molecular machines could arise spontaneously. And once in existence, they started producing molecules that cannot be formed spontaneously. More precisely, they started producing specific genes and specific proteins, and that is what cross the gulf that divides inanimate matter from life. Paragraph 4. The genetic code was the first organic code in the history of life, but was not the only one. We have seen that other organic codes came into existence and that they account not only for the production of new biological objects, but also for the organization of these objects into higher structures and for their interactions with the external world. Semiosis, in short, was not limited to the production of specific molecules. There are at least three different types of semiosis in nature and we find codes at all levels of life, from the world of genes and proteins all the way up to, the mi to mind and language. Physics and chemistry provide, of course, the building blocks of life, but what animates matter is code. And that is why there is a deep truth in the oversimplified statement that life is semiosis. must the author make to preserve the logic of his main argument? A. Codes can be found in all molecules. B. Chemical evolution happens over extended time periods. C. Molecular machines are not specific molecules. Or D. Genetic codes were among the first organic codes. So really think about this and definitely press pause if you need to. If you're having difficulty answering, open up a second window to view the reading of the passage and search for the text support to um, select the correct answer choice. All right. Uh, um, the evidence the author uses to support his logic, like his argument, okay? All right, so let's establish our evidence. Hmm. Okay, the author begins paragraph one by arguing, arguing that there's a gulf, like, you know, a stream or divide between matter and life, because how can matter, which is fundamentally different than life, give rise to life? The author then go on, goes on to claim to have bridged that gulf by the end of the passage by arguing that um, life is comprised of components that can only be made from coded and sequenced processes, while matter contains components that are more random and spontaneous. Okay, okay. So he's clearly not assuming that all molecules have codes. So answer choice A is out. And the um, time span of chemical evolution is not relevant to the argument. Answer choice B is out as well. While the author states that um, the genetic code was the first organic code, as you know, expressed here, this is an isolated fact that serves no critical logical role in the argument. It's just a fact, so it's not essential. It's out as well. So by default, the correct answer choice is answer choice C. And let's go get into this a little bit more. In paragraph two, so go back and look at paragraph two, the author states that, quote, specific molecules do not arise spontaneously. And then in paragraph three, the author states that molecular machines could arise spontaneously. Thus, um, if you assume that molecular machines are not specific molecules, then the statement makes sense and it wouldn't be 
contradictory, okay? So that this assumption would have to be true. All right. Okay. Okay, so in paragraph three, the author most likely mentions bond makers, copy makers, and code makers in order to A, offer examples of molecular machines that are essential to life, B, rebut the common scientific view that molecular sequencing is a complex process, C, illustrate that there are at least three different types of semiosis in nature, or D, emphasize that components of matter arise by spontaneous processes. So press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. If you're having difficulty answering, because this one is a little bit more involved, um, definitely open up a second window to view the reading of the passage and search for the text support to select the correct answer choice. All right. Also wants you to recall or think about the evidence the author uses to support his argument, and here the evidence is shown to you. Okay. So let's first delve into answer choice B. While the author rejects the idea that life should be defined according to chemical complexity, the author never argues that molecular sequencing is not a complex process. We just can't make this assumption. So answer choice B is out. As for answer choice C, in paragraph four, the reference to at least, there's a reference to at least three different types of semiosis. And it's merely to underscore that there are codes at all levels of life from the world of genes and proteins all the way up to mind and language. So this is a different reference. This isn't dealing with bond makers, copy makers, and code makers, okay? So that's out as well. Although this is a very tempting choice. I could see why some people who are in a rush would select this. So don't feel bad if you selected that. And finally, the author points out in paragraph three that bond makers, copy makers, and code makers are molecules that are essential um, for coded processes, okay, such as sticking subunits together. So if you go back, open up a second window and look at paragraph three, you'll see this mention, okay? So you know, the answer choice that's going to be selected looks it's looking like A. And lastly, although the author mentions these molecular machines are spontaneously um, produced, this is not the central main argument. It's true, but it's not the main argument, um, which is that they execute non-spontaneous processes essential to living organisms, okay? So, the, you know, this is a superlative type of question where several answer choices are facts, but which one is the most, offers the most truth in the context of this question? And that's just going to be A. All right. Okay.